by the time representatives are done delivering their speeches today, 150 Palestinians will have been killed, including 60 children. In the last two weeks, over 5,700 Palestinians have been killed, including over 2,300 children and 1,300 women. Compared to the population of Gaza, that is the equivalent of 145,000 British citizens or 700,000 U.S. citizens. Almost all those killed by Israel are civilians. Over 1 million displaced, 170,000 housing units destroyed. Excellencies, only international law and peace are worthy of your country's unconditional support. More injustice and more killing will not make Israel safer. No amount of weapons, no alliance, will bring to it security. Only peace will. Peace with Palestine and its people. The fate of the Palestinian people cannot continue to be disposition, displacement, denial of rights and death. Our freedom is the condition of shared peace and security. You have all spoken of the Palestinian people's legitimate grievances, addressing them, of their legitimate aspirations, help achieving them, of their right to self-determination, support its realization. For those actively engaged to avoid an even greater humanitarian catastrophe and regional spillover, it must be clear that this can only be achieved by putting an immediate end to the Israeli war launched against the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. Stop the, blood, the bloodshed. There is no amount of humanitarian aid that can address the situation if more death, destruction, and devastation are imposed on our people in Gaza. There is no way to contain underlying tensions in our region if that Reality does not change. There are so many fronts open for war and none for peace. Some of my colleagues spoke to me about the pain and anger of the bereaved families. Every family in Gaza is a bereaved family. No one is spared. No one is safe. Where is the solidarity with them? Where is the empathy towards them? Where is the outrage for their killing? If these expressions are genuine, they cannot be accompanied by excuses for the killer and reasons for him to continue the killing. We should be on the same side, all of us who believe in justice and in peace, in the rule of international law, in the value and sanctity of human life, we should stand shoulder to shoulder in these moments, but that is only possible if, there, if everyone recognizes the value of Palestinian life, the need to uphold Palestinian rights. This is only possible if you offer unconditional support to the rule of international law and the objective of peace, not to those breaching the former and destroying the latter. Sooner or later, you will have to admit that the interests of your countries and those of this Israeli government are not aligned, but rather opposed. The sooner you recognize it, the more lives can be saved, the more chance we have to walk back from the abyss. It may be hard to imagine in these circumstances a different reality. The effort and energy it would take the difficult choices it implies, the political cost it carries, the changes to policies it entails. But as we said repeatedly, it is worth it. Because of the alternative, the only, the one we are living in right now, the one the Palestinian people have been experiencing for decades, there is a reality where no Palestinians and no Israelis are killed, where all enjoy equal measures of freedom, peace, and security. That reality is the one that deserves all your efforts and all your resources. 
Invest in peace, not war. Support justice, not vengeance. Stand for freedom, not justify continued subjugation and occupation. Billions of people from all faiths and all origins care about the fate of the Palestinian people. They measure against it all the statements and positions of your countries. They consider it the ultimate test for the values one proclaims and the norms we all enacted. In Gaza, under the rebels lies over 1,000 Palestinians and all the values and all the norms. Under the bombs, two million Palestinians and all the values and all the norms. Abandoning the Palestinian people is betraying, the people is betraying those values and norms. You either rescue the international law-based order or leave it to die there. We thank all those who have taken an equivocal position and offered support, starting with the countries of our region who understand more than any other the implications of the continued inhumane and barbaric attacks against our people, but also countries across the globe, peoples in your streets, the moral voices of this world. Please listen to them. You have families, and some of you evoked them when Israelis were killed. How you could not but think of your loved ones and what pain and suffering you would feel if they had endured a similar fate. I am therefore convinced you cannot be numb to a reality where all the people you love, your parents, grandparents, siblings, children, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, and cousins, and in-laws are all in danger of imminent death or worse, have all been killed in one strike, in one instant. That is happening repeatedly. Can you feel their pain? Can you imagine the day after for them, for that child who is the only survival for his entire family? Can you then imagine how we feel when anyone claims this is for the better? Can you imagine your loved ones besieged and bombed deprived of the essential goods for their survival, their fate, dependent on decision to allow or prevent fuel, water, and food from entering with any delay, meaning a death sentence for many. Families should be reunited in life, not in death. If you say you are for international law, international humanitarian law, and for protection of civilians, then nothing can justify what Israel is doing. This is targeting of civilians, or at best inhumane, unlawful, indiscriminate attacks. This is collective punishment. Once you remove the principles of humanity and distinction from the laws of war, nothing remains. These are crimes and should be treated as such. What Israel is doing is constant with its belief that we are subhumans or human animals, as they put it. But surely you don't share that belief. You do not believe our lives are less worthy, less secret, more expendable. So imagine what you would do if bombs were falling on Israel, killing civilians by the thousands, and then ask why is this any different? Israel has killed thousands of Palestinians over the years, and, do, and yet no one suggested that entitled us to start killing Israeli civilians, neither un, un, under a right to defend ourselves, to protect our own, or to resist. Your message was always clear. Nothing can justify killing Israeli civilians. Well, nothing justifies killing Palestinian civilians, nothing. I will turn right now to speak in Arabic, please. (laughs) 
سيد الرئيس مستر بريزدنت is it not the security council's duty to maintain international peace and security and preserving the principles and purposes of the UN charter that have guaranteed to our peoples to save the generations from the scourge of war and taking these joint and effective measures to prevent the causes that threaten peace as per the principles of international law and justice or is it difficult for your security council to uphold its responsibility and its mandate and resolutions without selectivity or double standards when it relates to Palestine is it not the security council's role to address the aggression that targets newborn babies and men and women and children and providing Palestinian civilians with protection against the continued crimes of the occupation and addressing the root causes of the issue and addressing the reasons for instability and insecurity which represent the desire of the occupying Israeli uh, power to colonize the Palestinian people. Peace and security pass through the gate of empowering the Palestinians and their enjoyment of their inalienable rights and not through evading this path and ignoring their suffering. Mr. President, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and I quote, the disregard and contempt for human rights have resulted in barbarous acts which have outraged the conscience of mankind, end quote. Here I address the international community and ask, represented by your council, is your human conscience not offended by the crimes of the Israeli occupation over the course of 56 years of its colonial occupation or by the terrorism, killing, destruction, and starvation to which the Palestinian people are exposed today, doesn't this wholesale killing offend you through the Israeli targeting of innocent persons and, uh, and houses of worship and other uh, civilian objects and the humanitarian staff depriving our people of their humanity it does not offend you? The statements by Israeli officials do not offend you that call for ethnic cleansing and genocide and that describe the Palestinian people and children as children of darkness and as human animals in order to allow for uh, killing. Does this not offend the uh, conscience, the continued blockade for 16 years and the starvation of the people and the prevention of water, food, fuel? and other necessary supplies does not does this not offend the human conscience to target uh, civilians in Gaza in, as well as Jerusalem and in the West Bank and the desecration of holy sites and the magnitude of civilians that must fall so that your august council can call for ending this madness and impunity do not mistake the devastating war against the civilians in the Gaza Strip is an extension of the aggression by this occupation against our people to continue its colonization of our land. Peace and security cannot and will not be achieved by crushing the skulls of infants or through wiping out Gaza or turning it into a hell or reducing its area as has been announced repeatedly by everyone who carries out this killing and destruction. It will also not materialize by arming thousands of terrorist settlers and encouraging them to continue their terror attacks against our people in Jerusalem and the occupied West Bank. Mr. President, the Palestinian children in Gaza are writing their names on their hands so that they not become unknown corpses and so that they not be buried in uh, 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 collective uh, graves. Uh, this is a revenge against children and women and civilians, which has b been agreed by the world to prevent, uh, and the purposes of the UN Charter has sought to uh, contain that and, uh, and prevent it. Yes, Mr. President, 
Israel is avenging uh, against women and children and the entire Palestinian people. They are uh, taking revenge uh, on the victim, the victim that continues to demand its rights to freedom and independence and return. The people who remain resilient in the face of aggression supported by hate speech led by the occupying authorities who want to continue the crime of the Nakba. As our great poet has said, Mahmoud Darwish, we are the victim that has tried all forms of killing, including the most modern weapons, but we are the miracle that does not die and cannot die." End quote. The world witnesses the killing and destruction and mass arrests and displacement carried out by Israel against the Palestinian people and has coexisted with these crimes and impunity and even protected it instead of searching for a radical solution to the occupation, ending the occupation and realizing the rights of the Palestinian people is the only way to ensure regional and international stability, security and peace not killing more Palestinians. The serious escalation in the area is, the is mainly caused by the absence of rights, and therefore the urgent solution required from the Council today is to call for immediate cessation of the Israeli aggression and uh, ceasefire uh, and to work urgently to secure humanitarian access in all parts of the Gaza Strip and to end the forced displacement and to provide international protection for the Palestinian people and achieve justice through accountability. In addition to the necessary practical measures to address the root causes of the issue and end the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territory with Jerusalem as the capital of a Palestinian state, as per your resolutions and as per the, the peace process and international law, and also empowering the Palestinians to enjoy their inalienable rights, including the return of refugees and self-determination as per resolution 194. War and peace start from Palestine. Our, our area has suffered enough wars. Gaza today is the world capital. All eyes are fixed on Gaza. Do not fail the test. There is a resilient people in Gaza who have tolerated what no human can tolerate. Enough torture, enough killing, enough injustice. Long live Gaza and long live Palestine and long live freedom so that peace can live for long. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank His Excellency Mr. Al Maliki for his statements. Z News.